Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with Day 116, April 25th, Second Chronicles chapters 17 to 20, Reform under Jehoshaphat. Overview. Building upon the foundation of the early years of his reformer father Asa, Jehoshaphat appoints Levites to travel around the country carrying the law of the Lord and encouraging the people to follow the ways of the Lord. A quarter century of godly leadership is nearly cut short by a foolish alliance between Jehoshaphat and Ahab, king of Israel. After being rebuked for his momentary lapse of faith, Jehoshaphat continues his reforming ways by destroying idols in the land and appointing judges to render righteous and impartial decisions in the courts. Chapter 17, Jehoshaphat's Teaches. Chapter 18, Ahab's Death, Revival in the Cities. Chapter 19, Jehoshaphat's Judges. Chapter 20, Moab's Defeat, Reform in the Courts. Insight, A Matter of Emphasis. Second Chronicles chapter seventeen twenty. In the First Kings narrative, Jehoshaphat's reign is covered in only one chapter because the focus of that narrative is to explain the demise of the kingdom, a tragedy to which Jehoshaphat contributed nothing. In Second Chronicles, however, four chapters are given to his reforms, which were aimed at reviving and preserving Judah's religion. Insight. Beating yourself at your own game, Second Chronicles 20, verse 23. As part of God's divine strategy for giving Jehoshaphat the victory over Moab and Ammon, the armies turned against their allies, chapter 20, verse 23. That is, the enemy forces fought and killed each other. Can you think of another Old Testament battle in which the same thing happened? See Judges chapter 7, verse 22. Second Chronicles chapter 17, Jehoshaphat rules in Judah. Then Jehoshaphat, Aza's son, became the next king. He strengthened Judah to stand against any attack from Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified towns of Judah, and he assigned additional garrisons to the land of Judah and to the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father's early years and did not worship the images of Baal. He sought his father's God and obeyed his commands instead of following the evil practices of the kingdom of Israel. So the Lord established Jehoshaphat's control over the kingdom of Judah. All the people of Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, so he became very wealthy and highly esteemed. He was deeply committed to the ways of the Lord. He removed the pagan shrines and Asherah poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, Jehoshaphat sent his officials to teach in all the towns of Judah. These officials included ben Hael, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah. He sent Levites along with them, including Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Ashel, Shimeroth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tobo Adonijah. He also sent out the priests, Elishama and Jehoram. They took copies of the book of the Lord of the Lord and traveled around through all the towns of Judah, teaching the people. Then the fear of the Lord fell over all the surrounding kingdoms, so that none of them wanted to declare war on Jehoshaphat. Some of the Philistines brought him gifts and silver as tribute, 
And the Arabs brought 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful and built fortresses and storage cities throughout Judah. He stored numerous supplies in Judah's towns and stationed an army of seasoned troops at Jerusalem. His army was enrolled according to the ancestral clans. From Judah, there were 300,000 troops organized in units of 1,000 under the command of Adna. Next in command was Jehoahan, who commanded 280,000 troops. Next was Amasiah, son of Zikri, who volunteered for the Lord's service with 200,000 troops under his command. From Benjamin, there were 200,000 troops equipped with bows and shields. They were under the command of Eliada, a veteran soldier. Next in command was Jehoshabad, who commanded 180,000 armed men. These were the troops stationed in Jerusalem to serve the king, beside those Jehoshaphat stationed in the fortified towns throughout Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 18, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Jehoshaphat enjoyed great riches and high esteem, and he made an alliance with Ahab of Israel by having his son marry Ahab's daughter. A few years later, he went to Samaria to visit Ahab, who prepared a great banquet for him and his officials. They butchered great numbers of sheep, goats, and cattle for the feast. Then Ahab enticed Jehoshaphat to join forces with him to recover Ramat Gilead. Will you go with me to Ramat Gilead? King Ahab of Israel asked King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Jehoshaphat replied, Why, of course, you and I are as one, and my troops are your troops. We will certainly join you in battle. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first let's find out what the Lord says. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, 400 of them, and asked them, Should we go to war against Ramat Gilead, or should I hold back? They all replied, Yes, go right ahead. God will give the king victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? We should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There is one more man who can consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. Jehoshaphat replied, that's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quickly, bring Micaiah, son of Imlah. Micaiah prophesies against Ahab. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed, Yes, they said, Go up to Ramat Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what my God says. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramat Gilead or should I hold back? Micaiah replied sarcastically, Yes, go up and be victorious, for you will have victory over them. But then the king replied sharply, how many times must I demand that you speak only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? Then Micaiah told him, In a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you the king of Israel exclaimed to Jehoshaphat? He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. Then Micaiah continued, Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice King Ahab of Israel to go into battle against Ramat Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. 
How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. Then Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. Since when did the spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you, he demanded. And Micaiah replied, You will find out soon enough when you are trying to hide in some secret room. Arrest him, the king of Israel ordered. Take him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, Everyone, mock my words. The death of Ahab. So King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramath Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issued these orders to his chariot commanders. Attack only the king of Israel. Don't bother anyone else. So when the Aramean chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But Jehoshaphat called out, and the Lord saved him. God helped him by turning the attackers away from him. As soon as the chariot commanders realized he was not the king of Israel, they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Turn the horses and get me out of here. Ahab groaned to the driver of the chariot. I'm badly wounded. The battle raged all that day. And the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the Arameans. In the evening, just as the sun was setting, he died. Second Chronicles chapter 19. Jehoshaphat appoints judges. When King Jehoshaphat of Judah arrived safely home in Jerusalem, Jehu, son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. Why should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? He asked the king. Because of what you have done, the Lord is very angry with you. Even so, there is some good in you. For you have removed the Asherah poles throughout the land, and you have committed yourself to seeking God. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem, but he went out among the people traveling from Bathsheba to the hill country of Ephraim, encouraging the people to return to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges throughout the nation in all the fortified towns, and he said to them, Always think carefully before pronouncing judgment. Remember that you do not judge to please people, but to please the Lord. He will be with you when you render the verdict in each case. Fear the Lord and judge with integrity, for the Lord our God does not tolerate perverted justice, partiality, or the taking of bribes. In Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites and priests and clan leaders in Israel to serve as judges for cases involving the Lord's regulations and for civil disputes. These were his instructions to them. You must always act in the fear of the Lord with faithfulness and an undivided heart. Whenever a case comes to you from fellow citizens in an outlying town, whether a murder case or some other violation of God's laws, commands, decrees, or regulations, you must warn them not to sin against the Lord, so that he will not be angry with you and them. Do this and you will not be guilty. Amariah, the high priest, will have final say in all cases involving the Lord. Zebediah, son of Ishmael, a leader from the tribe of Judah, will have final say in all civil cases. The Levites will assist you in making sure that justice is served. Take courage as you fulfill your duties, and may the Lord be with those who do what is right. Second Chronicles chapter 20 War with surrounding nations After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. 
They are already at Hazazan Tamar. This was another name for En Gedai. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah in Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. And now, see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. As the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehazel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Zerul. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to stop fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their ally from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, lairs, and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side.
Summary of Jehoshaphat's reign. So Jehoshaphat ruled over the land of Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azabah, the daughter of Shillai. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the ways of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove the pagan shrines, and the people never fully committed themselves to follow the God of their ancestors. The rest of the events of Jehoshaphat's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the record of Jehu, son of Hanani, which is included in the book of the kings of Israel. Some time later, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance with King Ahaziah of Israel, who was very wicked. Together they built a fleet of trading ships at the port of Ezion Geba. Then Eliezer, son of Dodavahu, from Marasha prophesied against Jehoshaphat. He said, because you have allied yourself with King Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy your work. So the ships met with disaster and never put out to sea. My daily walk. When times of crisis come to your family, how do you respond? Does the pressure pull you apart or weld you closer together? Do you find yourself praying less as a family or more? Jehoshaphat faced a crisis. The Moabites and Ammonites were amassing their troops in preparation for an all-out assault on Judah. Jehoshaphat had every right to be afraid, withdrawn, worried, and indecisive. But instead, he gathered all Judah together to seek help from the Lord in an unprecedented national call to prayer. All the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children. 2013. A prayer meeting involving every member of the family. Is that what happens in your home? If not, gather your family together to discuss a crisis you are facing. Allow each person to pray for God's strength and wisdom. You'll find your love deepening for the God to whom you pray, as well as for the people with and for whom you pray. Pessimism is pulling tomorrow's cloud over today's sunshine. So true. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day. Keep up the good work, and God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.